what are some different ways of being an herbalist? Ah, yes, there are so many. So I can start with some of the ones that I personally do, because that's near and dear to my heart and part of my daily life. Um, so of course, there's being a clinical herbalist and seeing clients and doing that consult with them, whether it's virtual or in person, and helping to support people in their health goals and optimal well being with herbs as one of the primary modalities. Uh, a lot of times we'll integrate healthy living in addition to just herbs, but oftentimes herbs is a big piece. So that's wonderful. And that's, I think, something that a lot of people think about when they think I want to be an herbalist. That's one of the biggies. But there is a lot that goes into being a clinical herbalist. And then there are many different avenues you can go in, whether you're approaching it from a more plant spirit medicine perspective, a more like in the dirt weeds and garden plants and local war kind of herbalism, whether you're doing TCM, Ayurveda, or, you know, whatever your cultural mindset is around herbs, Western herbalism is where my training and skill and um, background is in. So there's that, but there are so many other ways to be an herbalist too. And a lot of times we do integrate facets of whatever our other skill sets or prior lives so for me, my journalism segued really nicely into writing about herbs. So I did a lot of freelancing for many years for different magazines about herbal topics. And then uh, over the years, <laughs> a lot of magazines, print magazines have been shutting down. So less of that these days, but now more books. And so you can write about herbs. Teaching is a great thing too. There are a lot of great herb schools and I love, that's one of my favorite things that I do is teaching classes. And you can start with really basic community classes. You know, whatever the topic is that you want to teach on should be something you're somewhat familiar with and skilled in, but you don't have to know everything. You just have to know what you're teaching about. So when folks are starting off, they can teach really simple classes that the general public will often really, really enjoy. And then you can branch out from there and you do learn a lot about herbs as you're teaching too, and you're preparing those materials. So those are the things, the main things that I do that are pretty popular ways of being an herbalist. But I mean, for example, you do this whole different side of things <laughs> where you're you're sort of a gateway to herbalism through education, connecting people, podcasts, videos, events. Um, you know, there's that side of things. I know folks who are event organizers for herbal events. Uh, you can, of course, be a grower. You can be a product maker. That's another really popular um, way to be an herbalist. And, you know, just on and on and on from there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you have any additions, but those are just a few of the many. You could work for an herbal company. Yeah. Yeah. I think you covered a lot of them. And it, going back to me and Hannah's conversation, uh, this is, I don't know if you can see Kitty. <laughs> mm. Oh, I saw that you had gotten a new Kitty. Adorable. Yeah, he's probably sleeping somewhere. This is Zillow. Oh, this is not the new kitty. No, no. But yeah, Hannah and I were talking about, you know, just kind, kind of, and I, you kind of mentioned it too, but combining your like core strength or one of your core strengths with herbalism and then boom, the middle of that is uh, kind of a job. And that's basically what Herb Rally is, is, is basically uh, my skill set, which is kind of helping connect people to herbalism. And it's just a website based around that. So yeah, kind of whatever your skill set is, if uh, if you if you um, you know are passionate about something, and then just combining that with herbalism. But yeah, really, I think the it's just the limits are your own imagination. There's so many different things you could do. I worked for, um, yeah for Mountain Reserves for 11 years, and I consider myself the here he is. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to experiment. I think it's a good idea just to kind of get in the field, say if that's just working at your local herb shop, and then that's a gateway to the next thing. Um, yeah, when I first started in, getting into herbalism, I remember it was just this like insatiable, you know, curiosity. And so I, I went to the the community college and I started taking a class with uh, KP Khalsa, who teaches Ayurveda and TCM here in Eugene, actually. Um, but yeah, then it just kind of, one thing led to the next. So I would say just start somewhere and then follow your curiosity. 
I totally agree. And I also worked in natural food stores when I was in college. That was one of my college jobs. And that I'm sure helped launch me. I ended up working in the supplement department. And then I ran the supplement department at another um, natural food store before I launched my business. And uh, it's a great way to, it's, it's usually a low paying <laughs> job, although herbalists, you know, we, we yeah. tend to be kind of used to low pay. It's not, <laughs> it, there are probably a few herbalists out there who make mega bucks, but, um, <laughs> but generally speaking, I think most of us, it's a calling, but, uh, but, you sure. know, working in natural food stores is, is retail is usually not super high paying, but it's a great way to interact with people. So I loved learning what people were working with, what was working for them, what wasn't. Anytime somebody asked a question that I didn't know, we'd pull out the herb books and look things up. And um, it was just such a great, great opportunity. And there are so many of those opportunities to play around and see what you do. Like when I was first starting out, I tried making a few products to sell at something. And I was like, wow, I really hate doing that. <laughs> That's not my thing at all. Um, and that was before all the GMPs and the regulations came out. But um, but even before that, I was like, yeah, that, that was stressful. I didn't like that at all. I organized uh, the very first Urban Garden Day in New Hampshire for, at the time, we were part of a, a different nonprofit. Now we're part of the American Herbalist Guild as a chapter, but at the time we were a different organization. But I ran a, a event and then I was like, wow, that was that was really stressful. Like my <laughs> I was up at night like formulating spreadsheets in my head and to-do lists. And I was like, yep, nope, that's not my thing either. Um, so <laughs> playing around with different things and seeing, you know, not only what your community loves, but what you love doing, what you're good at, but also what you enjoy doing. You know, you might be good at something, but you hate every minute of it, then that's probably not the the way in which you want to be an herbalist. And it's such a such a creative field to work with that you can craft ex exactly what you want. There's no reason why you need to do herbalism in any particular way. So it's I love that about it. I don't know what you think about, say, like setting big, audacious goals, but uh, I remember a major transition of my life was I was feeling very down, lost, not really sure what I should do. And it occurred to me through lots of like self-help books and stuff like that, that I should probably set some sort of big, audacious goal. And um, and I did. Uh, I was working at the hospital as a dietitian aide. Um, I, I thought I was going to be a dietitian. Uh, but then herb. Um, or rally. Mountain Rose Herbs moved from Pleasant Hill to Eugene, Oregon, and it was just kind of right when I started really getting into herbalism. Uh, and I, I, I was like, I'm going to get a job there. And I wrote this down. And th this is going to sound really um, arrogant or conceited of me, but it's okay. I'm just going to tell the truth. I wrote down, I want to become the face of Mountain Rose Herbs, and um, and you did. And I, <laughs> you know, face. <laughs> well, and I came, I became a face, and um, and I don't even know why I wanted to. I, I think that it had to do with maybe like proving to myself that I could be something, uh, or do something cool. But yeah, two years after working at Mountain Rose Herbs, Sean, one of the owners uh, of Mountain Rose Herbs, literally said verbatim, "Mason, you're the face of Mountain Rose Herbs," and it was, uh, it was just like this. Oh, I got goosebumps, you know, like wow, I, I set up, I set this goal and I did it. And I guess I tell the story not to like sound, you know, like I'm bragging or something, but I think you as a listener should, if you're just getting going, you should set some big goal and, uh, just, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, set a time frame, a long time frame, so you could be patient with it. But, um, yeah, set a big goal and then work slowly to, to achieve it. And, uh, yeah, I was just, uh, really proud that I was able to do that. And, um, I don't know. That's kind of just a couple thoughts I had. Yeah, that is so cool. I, I completely agree with the power of um, setting a goal, setting a goal that really calls to you. You know, you don't want to just set a goal that you're not passionate about, but something that just you're drawn to and creating. You know, I'm a bit of a list maker, as we've already established. <laughs> and so I have at many times in my life been like, what do I want to do? Like, oh, it'd be really cool if I could go to the the jungle and study plants. It'd be really cool if I could go to an herb school. It'd be really cool if I could write a book. It'd be I ended up doing almost all of the <laughs> things that I wrote down. And sometimes I'd forget about the list and find it later and be like, 
oh, cool. I did all these things. Yeah. And certainly I, you know, I have a pretty blessed life and I'm privileged and I'm also just sort of a somewhat ambitious, like, sure. you know, go getter that likes to move towards things. But I do think there's a power of that, that vision board, that list, especially once you put it on paper and say, you know what, like, I really, this seems almost like it could be unattainable, but I really want it. And in my ideal world, this is what I'd love to achieve. I think that there is a sort of magic and direction to that, that often can come to fruition. And, uh, and I've used it, that kind of a, a list in other ways in my life over the years that later I was like, oh my goodness, you know, it's amazing how much of this list, you know, came to fruition that I never even thought would be possible. So I uh, swear, yeah, the power of list making and writing stuff down is uh, undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> I probably have too many lists. Yeah. I, I uh, definitely, I definitely have too many lists, but I wouldn't really be able to function <laughs> without them. Is Blue Vervain one of your plant allies, perchance? Yes, Blue okay. Vervain is definitely those people, the people whose lists have lists have yeah. lists. <laughs> yes, definitely. And, you know, get the muscle tension and the headaches and the ticks and the spasms. Um, definitely. Blue Vervain is one of my plants. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> that must be why we get along pretty well. well probably. So. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Come from the same cloth. Exactly. Uh, and well, on that note, too, I think yeah. that, you know, sometimes people will, an opportunity will arise or you think you might want to do something. And if you ever start to get that feeling in your gut, like it's just making you really stressed out thinking about it versus excitement of like, oh, yeah, I love this. And I love that. Um, I would listen to that gut instinct. There've been a few times where opportunities arose that I thought I'd be stupid not to take them. But, you know, after I was like almost about to take it. I'd be sleeping and tossing and turning and just really not happy with the thought of that. And I think it has always steered me right to listen to my gut. And I think that's really important um, to not do what you think you should do, but do what you are really drawn to do. Such good advice. Yeah. The gut and the heart. Uh, yeah. I don't know the science behind it, but I, isn't there some sort of uh, neurons that are all kind of the same going on there? <laughs> yeah, I don't know the exact science okay, on it either, yeah. but certainly, you know, we have a couple of different areas sure. of our quote unquote brains. We've got the head, the heart, the gut, probably a few mm -hmm. others, but those are the biggies. Yeah, intuition is underrated. I'm 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 very curious to see where the science goes with that, but uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, anytime I followed my my gut or my heart or my spirit, uh, yeah, it's pretty much led me to the correct answer most times.